So this is the lesson for 7-3 parallel lines, day one. Um, parallel lines are two lines that never cross, all right? They're these two blue lines at the bottom of the screen. Um, they sort of look like train tracks and they go in the same exact direction. The symbol are two straight up and down lines, which are actually parallel lines. Uh, this word is the word called transversal. All right, all that a transversal is, is it's the line that crosses the two parallel lines, all right? Um, when it crosses the two parallel lines, it forms eight different angles. We have one angle, two angles, three angles, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So when a, when a transversal crosses two parallel lines, it forms eight different angles. All of those angles have relationships, all right? There are five different types of angle pair relationships that we're going to be learning about today. And also the other kind of question that you're gonna to have today is I'm going to give you one angle and you have to find the remaining seven angles. So when we take a look at this picture, that is not one degree and two degrees and three degrees and four degrees, all right? That's angle number one, angle number two, angle number three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Sometimes you'll see the angles numbered like they are here. Other times you'll see the, word, the angles lettered like A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. Um, the things that we need to do first are we need to identify the angle pair relationships. So let's start off with supplementary angles. You know that from earlier on in the chapter, you know that supplementary angles form that picture. It takes a straight angle and divides it into two pieces. So there are really eight different pairs of supplementary angles in this picture, all right? If we just take a look at the top half, all right? So let's just take a look at this top half set of angles for a second with one, two, seven, and eight. If we just take a look at one, two, seven, and eight, the first pair of supplementary angles that you have are right across here at the top, right? It forms with angle one and angle eight, it forms that exact picture. So angle one and angle eight are a pair of supplementary angles. We also have another pair on the side. So on the left, on the right hand side, where they're right next to each other, they're taking that straight angle. And if you turn your head to the side a little bit, you see that eight and seven are a pair of supplementary angles. Could you say the opposites of those as well? Could you say eight with one? Sure. Could you say seven with eight? Sure. It doesn't matter the order that you put the angle pair relationship in. The next ones that we have are across the bottom of that, we have angle two with angle seven. So two and seven are a pair of supplementary angles. And then we have along the left-hand side, we have angle one and angle two on the left-hand side. Again, you could say two and one as well. So there's four pairs of angles. Now that was just working with the top half set. Now, what I mean by the top half set is we have this one, two, seven, and eight, but then we also have this three, four, five, and six. Parallel lines cut by a transversal are sort of cut into two different parts. You have the top half and you have the bottom half. So now looking at the bottom half set of angles, we have three and six across the top. We have six and five along the right-hand side. Along the bottom, we have four and five. And along the left-hand side, we have three and four. So those are the eight different pairs of supplementary angles that are in this picture. On your homework today, um, one of the things that you'll have to do is you'll just have to name one pair of supplementary angles from that picture. Now, you also know from earlier on, earlier on in the chapter what vertical angles look like. Vertical angles, remember, vertical angles form, vertical angles form an X. The top and bottom of the X are the same. 
the left and the right of the X are the same. So do you see an X anywhere in this picture? Well, again, if we take a look at this top half set, if you only look in that circle or oval that I just drew, one and seven are vertical angles, right? Angles one and seven are vertical angles. So that is a pair of vertical angles. The same thing with, if you turn your head to the side a little bit, two and eight, two and eight are vertical angles as well. So that's two pairs of vertical angles. And now that same exact thing is going to happen in this bottom half set, right? If we look at three, four, five, and six, we have vertical angles right here with three and five. And then we have vertical angles right here with four and six. So there are really four different pairs of vertical angles in this picture. Now, the next kind you have never heard of before, all right? The next pair are called alternate interior angles. First of all, what does alternate interior mean? Interior means inside. Interior means inside. What we're talking about with inside is we're not looking at four and five. We're not looking at one and eight. We're looking inside the parallel line. So we're looking inside here. All right, we're looking inside the parallel lines. Alternate in this case, alter, alternate means the opposite corners, all right? Opposite corners. So opposite corners inside the parallel lines. The angles that we're looking at are two and six. Two is in the upper left-hand corner. Six is in the bottom right-hand corner. So they're on opposite sides and one is on the top, one is on the bottom. Those are alternate interior angles, two and six. The other pair of alternate interior angles are inside the parallel lines and opposite corners. So that would be three and seven. Three is in the bottom left, seven is in the upper right. So there's only two pairs of alternate interior angles. The next kind of pair of angles you have never heard of before either. All right, the next kind are corresponding angles. What I like to do with corresponding angles, just to remember what they are, is I like to put a little box around the S and P in corresponding. The S and P in corresponding helps you remember what corresponding angles are. Corresponding angles are in the same place, S and P, same place. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you have a top half set of angles, the one and eight, two and seven, and you have a bottom half set of angles, the three, four, five, and six. In that top half set of angles, we have angle number one, right? Angle number one, angle number one is in the top left-hand corner in that yellow area. Well, what angle is in the top left-hand corner in the bottom area? Well, that is angle number three. So angle one is in the top left, angle three is in the top left. This is in the top left of the top half section. This is in the top half of the bottom half section. So angle one and angle three are in the same place. Angle one and angle three are corresponding angles. Angle eight, is in the top right. Angle six is in the top right. So eight and six are corresponding angles because they're in the top right and the top right. Bottom right, bottom right, seven and five. Angle seven and angle five are in the bottom right and bottom right. So those are in the same place. Those are corresponding angles. The final one is, oops, the final one is two and four. Two and four are in the bottom left and bottom left. So there are really four pairs of corresponding angles. So again, on your homework today, you'll have to identify one pair of supplementary where there's really eight different pairs that you can choose from. You'll have to identify one pair of vertical angles. Again, there's four different answers there one pair of alternate interior, one pair of corresponding. Now the word congruent, 
Congruent just means equal to. All right, congruent means equal to. For a pair of congruent angles, we are looking for two angles that are equal to each other. Now, when we take a look at angles that are equal to each other, the vertical angles are equal to each other. So one is equal to seven, two is equal to eight, three is equal to five, and four is equal to six. Because remember, in vertical angles, the top and the bottom of the X are the same or equal to each other, and the left and the right of the X are the same or equal to each other. So for congruent angles, we're just looking for two angles that are equal to each other. One is equal to seven, two is equal to eight, three is equal to five, four is equal to six. Also, alternate interior angles are equal to each other, right? When you take a look at these two pictures, of like two and six. When you take a look at angles two and six, if they look the same size of the angle, notice that these two blue angles, they're both acute angles, right? If they look the same size, they are the same size. In parallel lines cut by a transversal, they are equal to each other. The same thing with the two obtuse angles, three and seven are equal to each other. So alternate interior angles, are equal to each other. Corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are equal to each other as well. So angle one and angle three. If we take a look at angle one and angle three, notice that they are both obtuse angles. Those two obtuse angles are equal to each other. Eight and six. Notice that they're both acute angles. Those are equal to each other. Seven and five, those are both obtuse angles. Those are equal to each other. And two and four, those are both corresponding angles. They're both acute angles. Those are equal to each other. So when they ask you for congruent angles, you can put any pair of vertical angles, any pair of alternate interior, or any pair of corresponding. So there are really 10 different answers here. This is a very, very, very important slide, all right, so that you can keep in mind what we're doing. Now, we're going to set up equations and solve for things tomorrow using this information. Today, you just have to identify. So very, very important that you're paying attention. Now, why aren't supplementary angles equal to each other? Well, supplementary angles add up to 180. Notice that we have one acute angle and one obtuse angle. They are totally different sizes. So that's why supplementary angles are not congruent. So here's the type of questions that you're going to have today, the other type. So let's say that I give you that this angle is 120 degrees. If I give you that this angle is 120 degrees, you have to find all seven missing angles, all right? And you're gonna do it in 10 seconds or less. Trust me on this, all right? So if this angle, this is the way that you should go about it. First of all, think about the top half set of angles and think about the bottom half set of angles. We're just going to do wherever the angle is given first. So I'm only focusing in on that top half set of angles right now. The easiest way to do this is to first do supplementary angles because you have supplementary angles right here. The angles that are next to each other in parallel lines cut by a transversal are supplementary. The angles that are next to each other have to add up to 180. So if this one is 120, this one has to be 60. If this one is 120, this one has to be 60 because when two angles are right next to each other, they add up to 180. Well, that forces this angle to be 120 because now the 60 and 120, 60 and 120 have to add up to 180. We also have vertical angles here with the 120 and 120. So that's half of your answers. Now we need to get the bottom half set of angles. Well, here's the thing. Corresponding angles are our friends. Corresponding angles, let us, let us say that the 
top half set of angles is the same exact pattern as the bottom half set of angles because we have the top left and the top left, 120 and 120. Top right, top right, and this is because of corresponding, 60 and 60. Bottom right, bottom right, 120 and 120. Bottom left, bottom left, 60 and 60. So you're gonna get this same exact pattern in the upper half set that you do in the bottom half set. Notice also another way to think about these is to look at the type of angles that you have. When you look at the type of angles, notice that 120 was an obtuse angle. All four obtuse angles are the same. Well, the same thing happens with the four acute angles, and this will always happen in parallel lines cut by a transversal. The four acute angles are also all the same. So as soon as you're given one obtuse angle, you know the three other obtuse angles. As soon as you're given one acute angle, you know the four acute angles. And that will always work. There are no exceptions. So take a look at this next one. In the next one, let's say that this angle is 140. Well, the way that I would start off with this, if that angle is 140, this one has to be 40 because when they're right next to each other, they have to add up to 180. This one has to be 40 because when they're right next to each other, they have to add up to 180. This one has to be 140. Now you're gonna do your upper half set of angles is the same exact pattern as your bottom half set. So we have 140 and 40 across the top. We have 40 and 140 across the bottom. So this is how we are doing these questions. Let me give you another one. Let's say that, let's say that this angle is 80. Well, if this angle is 80, the one next to it has to be 100 because when they're right next to each other, they're supplementary, they add up to 180. This one has to be 100 because when they're right next to each other, they're supplementary. They have to add up to 180. This one has to be 80 for that same reason or because of vertical angles. The bottom half set is the same exact pattern as the upper half set. So across the top of our pattern, we have 80 and 100. Across the bottom half set of our pattern, we have 100 and 80. I want you to draw this picture, please. Draw this picture. If I give you, if I give you that this angle is 30, go ahead and find all seven missing angles. And you're gonna do it in 10 seconds or less. Ready, go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And if this angle is 30, this one has to be 150 because when they're right next to each other, they have to add up to 180. This one has to be 150 also because when they're right next to each other, they have to add up to 180. This one has to be 30. Bottom half set is the same exact pattern as the upper half set. So across the top, we have 30 and 150. Across the bottom, we have 150 and 30. Let's try another one. So let's say that I give you that this angle is 153. Now to find that other angle that's right next to it, that's supplementary, remember that you have to do 180 minus the angle that you're given to find the other angle that's supplementary with it. Find this acute angle. Ready, go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah. 180 minus 153 is 27. So if that angle is 27, this angle has to be 27 as well because when they're right next to each other, they add up to 180. This one has to be 153 for that same reason or because of vertical angles. 
your upper half set of angles is the same exact pattern as your bottom half set. So we have 153, 27 across the top, 27, 153 across the bottom. So sometimes they're going to try and trick you with a question that looks like this. If you don't like that the parallel lines are going up and down instead of how they've been going, going side to side, right? You could always just turn your paper, right? But I'm gonna solve it just how it is. So let's say that this obtuse angle was 135. Well, if that obtuse angle is 135, that means the one next to it and the one next to it have to be 45 and 45 because 180 minus 135 gives you 45 for the supplementary angles. That means this one is 135. So the upper half set is the same exact pattern as the bottom half set. Now these are just turned on its side a little bit, but the same rules apply. Across the top, we have 135 and 45. Across the bottom, we have 45. We have 45 and 135. Take a look at the next one. So this next one is sort of set up the same way. So let me give you one of these angles. Let me tell you that this angle is 13. If that angle is 13, go ahead and find all seven missing angles. Ready? Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And if this angle is 13, this angle has to be 167 because 180 minus 13 is 167. When they're right next to each other, they have to add up to 180. So this one is 167 as well. This one has to be 13. Your bottom half set is the same exact pattern as your upper half set. So we have 13, 167 across the top. We have 167, 13 across the bottom. Go ahead, draw that piece of, draw that picture, please. Let me give you that this angle is 55. All right, if I give you that this angle is 55, go ahead and find all seven missing angles. Ready, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, if this angle is 55, the one next to it has to be 125 because 180 minus 55 gives you 125. The one next to it has to be 125. This one, because they add up to 180, this one is 55 because of supplementary or because of vertical. Your top half set is the same exact pattern as your bottom half set. So we have 125, 55, 55, 125. Again, remember also a different way to think about it is that all four acute angles are all the same and all four obtuse angles are all the same. So the next type of question that you're going to have is you're gonna be given a pair of angles. You have to say what they are. So take a look at this question. Just think inside your head. You don't have to write anything down. Just think inside your head. What are these? Are these corresponding? Are they supplementary? Are they vertical? Or are they alternate interior? Well, these are forming an X. Right? These are forming an X like this. So these are vertical angles. Take a look at the next one. Think about letter B. What kind of angles are they? Corresponding, supplementary, vertical, or alternate interior. Well, this 100 is in the top left, and this 100 is in the top left. 
since they're both in the same place, they are corresponding angles because they are both in the top left and top left. Take a look at letter C. What kind of angles are they? They are right next to each other. They are forming this picture in the red where they're taking a straight angle and dividing it into two pieces. These are supplementary angles. Take a look at letter D. These two 100s are inside the parallel lines in opposite corners. So inside the parallel lines in opposite corners, those are alternate interior angles. The last thing that I want you to do, you don't have to draw this picture, but what I want you to do, because you're going to have questions on your homework like this today, is I want you to name or write down one pair of each of these angles. Now, when you write down the pair, all that you have to write down are the two numbers. Like if you wanted one and three, you could write down the number one, three, all right? When you go on class kick today, you're not gonna put any spaces in between there. You're just gonna literally type the number like 13 or 31. So go ahead and name one pair of each of these angles, please. Name one pair of each of these. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds or so. Well, maybe a little more, maybe about 45 seconds. Name one pair of each of those angles, please. Maybe about 15 seconds more or so. Corresponding angles. Remember the S and P in corresponding stands for the same place. So we're looking for two angles that are in the same place, seven and three. Seven and three are in the upper left and upper left. Eight and four. Eight and four are in the upper right and upper right. Six and two are in the bottom right and the bottom right. One and five are in the bottom left and bottom left. Remember, you could have the opposites of all these. So instead of seven, then three, you could have three, then seven. Instead of eight and four, you could have four and eight. Supplementary angles. Supplementary angles form this picture where the two angles are right next to each other. So seven and eight across the top is probably the easiest. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Seven and eight are right next to each other. Those are probably the easiest ones to identify. Eight and six are next to each other along the right hand side. Five and six across the bottom. Seven and five across the right hand side. In the bottom half, we have three and four across the top, four and two along the right-hand side, one and two across the bottom, one and three on the left-hand side. Vertical angles. Vertical angles form an X. So you have an X here at the top. So seven and six, eight and five. We also have an X down here at the bottom, one and four three and two. Again, you can have the reverse of all these also. Alternate interior. Remember, interior means inside the parallel lines and it's opposite corners. So inside the parallel lines, we're not looking at seven and eight, not looking at one and two. So five and four, three and six, five and four, three and 
times six. Congruent. Congruent just means equal to. You could, for congruent, for congruent, you could have both of these, five and four, three and six, because alternate interior are equal to each other. You could have all of these, which are the vertical angles, because vertical angles are equal to each other. And you could have all of these, the corresponding, because corresponding angles are equal to each other. The only ones that you can't have for congruent are supplementary, because supplementary are not equal to each other. 